Connors T, how are ye? Welcome to episode 14 of the Candle of Tales podcast. I'm Sarah Hegarty and I'm sitting down here with my brother. And I'm Aaron Hegarty, sitting down in the shafas to record a podcast. <laughs> we started Candle of Tales here in Dublin about four years ago and we tell music. No. <laughs> We tell, we tell stories, stories set to music. Can you tell I'm a little bit tired today? Uh, we have always wanted to keep these stories accessible to absolutely everybody, regardless of whether you can pay for them or not. So everything is donations based as much as we can make it. And that is what we do for this podcast. So if you like what we're doing and you want to support us, head on over to Patreon.com and uh, throw us a bit of change if you can. <laughs> and we'll keep on telling music and playing stories. Yep. Until until nobody wants to hear anymore. <laughs> but, right. you know, seeing as everyone is still here, Aaron, do you want to tell us a story? All right. The story of Saif. Fionn McCool, the leader of the Fianna, was famous for his love of the hunt. He would bring his men on foot to go off and hunt in the wild places of Ireland. Over hills and past valleys they would follow birds that flew over the sky taking them down with great throws of their spears. They would catch rabbits and hares if they needed them. But Fionn loved chasing and catching wild deer the most. One day he left his great house which he had built up on the hill of Allen for him to lay down his head while he trained the men of the Fianna around the flatlands of the Curra. And when they left this day they were going off for a great hunt. He brought his great hounds with him, Bran and Skiolan, Bran the brindled and, and Skiolan, the slightly smaller of the two, but she had a red stripe from her nose to the tip of her tail. And these hounds, it was said, were smarter than the smartest of men. They would sniff out prey and they could tell Fionn more than any man ever could. This day they did not know what they would hunt. But Fionn felt sure that the sun in the sky was just about the right height for them to find a great chase. And so they were in the middle of a forest looking and waiting for the sign of prey when a speckled doe ran fast, blurring their vision as she ran so fast right past their eyes. Bran and Skiolon leapt into chase then, running faster than the fastest hounds that could not keep up with them. Fionn was the only man and warrior that could keep up with his hounds and so he belted it over the rocks, jumping over ledges and shrubs, under trees, past branches, flying around corners as he ran so quick and so fast. He stumbled not once as men fell all around him trying to keep up with him and the sound of their cries and calls to Fionn made him laugh, eager for the full flight of this chase as Bran and Skjolon howled it down and around a bend that he could not see and when he finally came around it he saw the speckled doe running now in a loping stride with Bran by her side and Skjolan jumping not for her throat but over her back and then ducking underneath her legs Bran and Skjolan now running beside this doe to and fro they jumped over and under playing with her like Fionn had never seen before. He ran to keep up with them, and as she turned her great head, he saw a pair of eyes that stopped his heart, hazel brown and green in between the points that met her pupil. He knew something magic was afoot, and so he followed the doe that kept on running. He had never seen a creature run so gracefully and he had never seen Bran and Skjolon so taken with a creature before. She looped a great arc back the way they had come and past the flatlands of the Curra. Fionn held up his hand so no man would throw a spear at this great deer. He was now sure some magic was afoot and when she landed her footfall up on top of the hill of Allen 
as she crossed the border of his own home. Bran and Skjolan stayed patiently and waited for their master to come. And as he entered the house, he felt magic in the air. It was thick and heavy with it. He moved as if through a clouded haze till he came to the great fireplace. And there stood a woman he'd never seen before. This woman, pale skin, and he looked straight into her eyes. Hazel brown, forest green in between the round of a black staring eye that stopped his heart. He fell to his knees, now knowing that this creature was the most beautiful thing he had ever seen. She smiled to see the great man so weakened all of a sudden and so ashamed to not know where to look because now that he had seen her eyes he was fully aware that she was very very naked all of a sudden and didn't really want to look at anywhere else so began to try to make small talk and asked her her name. Sive, she said. He offered her a cloak and as she wrapped it around her she told him her story. A druid had offered her his hand in marriage but she did not want to take it. And as the years went by his insistence and his appeals grew louder and more demanding on her until he captured her and took her away. He cast an evil spell for his name was Ferdurak, the dark druid. The spell changed her form into a speckled doe and he kept hold of her, imprisoned her in his house and he would laugh and mock and jeer for he knew no man could have her if he could not have her. And one night he was so drunk and so angry and so boastful that he told his servant the only way that Saive could ever change her form back to the way she had once been would be to find herself in the house of Fionn McCool and didn't everybody know that Fionn loved chasing and killing deer more than anything in the world. The servant had come to her the following morning and told her of this. She had nodded her head and had ran past the servant who left the door open for her. She knew in her heart of hearts that if she got near the leader of the Fianna if he had just one look at her eyes, he would see her. And Fionn knew it was true, for he had seen something much more than ever before when he saw her hazel eyes in the middle of the forest. All night they stayed talking. The following day, even though the sun rose up, they stayed talking in that beautiful sunrise gleam. She looked more beautiful than he could even put words to. Although food and drink were taken and given to them by many men, he did not want anyone else in with them, for he wanted her to himself, but he did not want to place any onus upon her. But she returned his love with a kiss. A kiss that melted muscle from his bones. It seemed to melt and open his heart like it could beat no more for one purpose it could beat for the love of her and her alone. The Fina fell by the wayside. He fell in her arms a few times that day and the following night and needless to say but they stayed and they rolled around for a long old time of it. And he was so besotted with her, he didn't want food nor drink anymore. He only had her, and she would sustain him. But as the weeks went by and turned into months, the men of the Fianna began to wonder, was Fionn McCool ever going to come out of that house? 
Then messages were sent that the King of Lachlan was coming with warships to Ireland's shore and the High King of Ireland needed the Fianna and needed Fionn McCool to lead them to victory. When the message came, Fionn really didn't want to go and leave Saive alone. But she told him that honestly, she could do with a break. And he was better off to go. He told his servants to pour her a bath, God knows she would need one. And he promised to be back in seven days. He would win this fight and take full flight back to her as soon as he could. Fionn McCool took the seven factions of the Fianna with him. The Dord Fian was sounded and every one of the tribes and fighting men of the Fianna came to Arden's shore to meet the Lachlanites. A great battle was fought and Fionn fought more furiously, more passionately than he had ever fought before because he wanted now to survive this fight for the full love that he had in his heart for Saive and just to return to her as soon as he could. At the end of the seventh day of fighting, the Lachlanites were beaten and defeated and driven back to their boats. The High King praised Fionn, but once the fighting was done, Fionn was off running once more back home to the hill of Allen. And when he came to his house, he called for Saive, but Saive did not come out the front door to meet him. When he came into his home, he saw his servants. They would not meet his eye. Eventually, one of the servants came over to him. We thought you'd come back already. We thought you had, you see. It was only yesterday. We heard your voice. And sure didn't save. Sure didn't save go running out because she had news for you. She ran out with her hand on her belly. Because, well, one of the girls figured out that she was with child and so she went running down the hill to see you we all saw you sure you were there with Brannan Skjola and when she came down she stopped and then she shrieked and in the shape of the man that was standing there was changed and the man with dark angry eyes a dark druid well the Brannan Skjola changed too and vicious dogs they tore at her then the dark druid he struck with a hazel rod and she changed into a deer and though we ran down we did we ran Fionn a mist came down and we couldn't get to her and when the mist went away there was there was no sign of her with this news Fionn's heart broke Verderuk had come back and tricked Saive. He knew now that he had taken her away. He ran out the gates and he ran back down the hill of Allen, not resting, not giving up in the idea he could find his Saive. One day had gone past, but he would fight and find her till the last moment of his life. He would search for her. He rallied the Fianna. He sounded the Dord Fianna. And though the men were weak and weary after seven long days of fighting, he demanded that they search the length and breadth of Ireland. They would go over every blade of grass. And he ran into every forest and up every stream, every herd of deer he searched through. Every portal to the other world he looked at. The hawthorn trees, the waterways, the heavy stones. He looked, he called, he prayed, he asked for every god of the two a day to help him out one way or other. But not one of them helped him. Not one of them cared. He searched and searched, but he could not find her. After the days turned into weeks, the moons changed again and again, but not a sign, not a sound, not a trace of Saive could be found. Fionn's broken heart did not heal, did not mend, it did not get better, but he got bolder, 
he got harder as he grew older. And as the months had turned into years, he began to get colder and colder. Till he was out one day in the hunt. He was up on top of Ben Bulban, and a mist had descended upon them. They, they lost the track of their prey that day until they walked forward and Fionn held up his hand once now he'd seen a pair of eyes gleaming at him through the mist. He walked forward and there he saw a boy holding on to a hawthorn tree. The boy had blonde, beautiful hair. He stared at him with hazel brown eyes and green in between. Fionn wrapped him in his cloak and he brought him home. He held him to his chest. He held him so tight. The boy he drank and he ate and he recovered and he stopped shivering after a while and when the weeks went by he began to start to play. He began to start to learn from the other boys and he began to start to speak after a long time and it wasn't for a long time more that he would tell Fionn his first memories were of his mother, a speckled deer who would nuzzle at him and every now and again an angry dark man would come down into the glade that they were in and could not leave from for there was only one way in and one way out and the dark man would talk nicely at first and then he would joke and then he would laugh and then he would grow angry at the deer who talked to him too in a human voice who was always sad and the angry man would strike at the deer till one day he did return he got so angry he He'd rather out of that one way in. And the place that he was in then evaporated and left. And Oshin was left holding on to a tree. Until Fionn had found him. And that confirmed what Fionn McCool knew in his heart of hearts. This boy was indeed his own son. He had her eyes and his hair after all. He named him Oshin. Which meant... Little dear. And although he was always happy with Oshin by his side, and although he became one of the great heroes of the Fianna, Fionn McCool never stopped searching, never stopped hoping he might find a track or a trace or a sight or a sound of Sive. But he never did. Ouch. Yeah. I remember telling this story live in the stag's head once with our mother sitting in the audience for the first time. Mm. And I very nearly burst out laughing at the very, very end because I think I ended on the line about him never seeing his true love again. And I just heard our dear mother Maria go, Aww. <laughs> it just cracked me up. So I, I, I always think of that when we tell the story. Sorry. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> I know. <laughs> It's a it's a very very sad story. It is, and that's why, yeah, I don't ever seem to be able to laugh the way you can at the <sighs> damn thing. Um, no, it's it's the it's the one story that always makes me forgive Fionn for the Dearman and Grania, for the episodes of him is growing old, for the Aiktuk stories. If you don't know what I'm talking about, we'll get to these in other podcasts. <laughs> We will. I mean, Fionn is basically the leader of the Fianna and oftentimes portrayed as, you know, perfect and great and the, the, has the salmon of knowledge and the wisdom of the world in his thumb since he was a kid. But often, if you look a bit closer at the stories, he's done some pretty terrible things, like in the Dear well, Magronia story. Like like all of these characters, he's not wholly good. And as he ages, he gets a bit kind of bitter. Yeah. And yet he's one of the great heroes of Ireland. He's, he's still one of the great heroes. Yeah. Uh, there's a saying that if a day were to go by without the name of Fionn McCool being mentioned, that would be the day the world ends. <laughs> All right, well, so, you know. Keep mentioning him anyway. Yeah, yeah, we'll keep mentioning him. We'll just keep on talking about him. Single handedly stopping Ar- Armageddon by, <laughs> by saying Fionn McCool every day. Um, yeah, like, this is the thing. This is It's just this in- extraordinarily tragic episode that happens to him. And it's a really brutal story for Sive. 
Like particularly, yeah. It's such a <sighs> it's such a tough one because you know she doesn't get out. No, she's got this guy who is such a recognisable character. The guy who won't fucking take no for an answer. Yep. And he does this horrible thing to her, turning her into a deer in this real, like, nasty dog in a manger. If, nobody if else I can't can. have you, nobody else can kind yeah. of a way. And she's extraordinarily resilient because she manages to break away. And do the thing that he thinks he could never be done is to be chased by Fiona, not killed. Yeah, she she manages it. She her humanity is able to shine through even in even in this transformed state. And again, I love the fact that Bran and Skjolon are the two that kind of sniff her out and don't they like recognize her? They recognize her because they have that otherworldly quality, and they just they you know dogs know dogs know a bit more Good than everybody else. Doggos, yes. You know, and it's like again pulling at the heartstrings a little bit because you know every dog has that little sixth sense of something going on. They'll They're good judges of character. Amazing. If your dog doesn't want to kill the deer, it's probably a person. I, I also like that that's kind of I, I love the fact that Fionn McCool is the kind of guy who sees his dogs behaving uncharacteristically and then trusts them. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like he's got enough wisdom to be like this is unusual. I'm going to trust what they're seeing. I'm not seeing it yet and I'm going to see what happens. Yeah. And out of it, you know, even though Saive is gone, like he basically has this honeymoon period, mm. uh, you know, and we talked recently about the psychosis of love in their last last week's um yeah well like they're still in their kind of honeymoon phase as you said that kind of limerence phase of just being like madly into each other and everything being perfect and everything being wonderful and they they have this idyllic year together and then boom she's fucking gone yeah and it's like i said it's so brutal because there's no there ends up ultimately being no escape for Sive. like she's such an incredibly tragic character yeah. like her fate is being led away by this horrible abusive nasty fucker who's yeah. got this obsession with her I and being torn away from her from her young son was yeah. she yeah and like God only fucking knows what happens there because you don't know he's just left Oshin's just left there and like the fact yeah. that you know his first memories are of this fucker coming in and beating and shouting and yelling at the, uh, at at his the deer that is his mother and like the only the only attempt at the kind of you know resolution for Fionn is that he has this son and he has this at least you know he has he has a son to remember her by and like there's lovely there's there's a lot of different stories in the in the Fianna tradition uh, there's a lovely one that situates their meeting much later where Fionn meets Oshin in the woods when Oshin is a young man oh. and they sit down and start playing chess together and the the story of Oshin's birth comes out in the chess game like they're chatting to each other nice. which is a really sweet um yeah, it's a really sweet kind of moment when when they actually meet and and realize who the other one is. But it doesn't. I mean, you know, it's still an enormous tragedy. Um, and a, a, I think there's something interesting in that as well. And you know, there are some myths. There are quite a lot of myths in which there really is no happy ending. There's no way through some of these things. Some things are so brutal that even in mythology, there isn't a way through them there isn't a way out of them and I think the Sive story is one of those ones that's just bare bones awful like people can you know people who are emotionally abusive and physically abusive like that in romantic relationships yeah they can kill you they can destroy your life mm-hmm. and it's fucking like there's you know what I mean like there's no magic solution to this no but I think that's the power of story because mm. you sit beside a story, you can lean into it as much as you want and you can see the real life and you can see the imagined and you can feel it and you can listen to it and let it wash over you and just, you can stay beside it. You can take the lesson without living the fucking thing. You know, you don't have to go through that to kind of go, oh yeah, 
you know, mm. there there are people who don't take no for answers. Warning, be aware of that. You know, uh, be aware of you know. Not that every story have to has ha, has to have a lesson, but even just emotionally to stimulate you to wake you up. Yeah, I mean, I think the 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 empathetic nature is really important. Um, and I yeah, like there are there are some stories that that attempt to present some kind of re- like solution or rationalization for for issues and then there are others that like you said you just kind of go through yeah and you and feel it, it just takes you on the journey of feeling what that's like so hope you uh, enjoyed feeling something or not yeah um we'll be back next month with some happier stories we will we promise it's not always that yeah so next month we're going to be talking about some of the great, sorry, next fortnight. It will be next month, it's June, it's May now, you know. But uh, then our next podcast we'll be talking with some of the great heroes and the great men of the Fianna and they're, they're some great crack. Oh, and yeah. it's it'll be all, it'll be a good bit more upbeat than this this time. It's not all tragedy and doom <laughs> not and Not all heartbreak. doom and gloom. All right, that's it so, till next time. This podcast was produced and edited by Oshin Ryan. The music was by Oshin Ryan as well. A uh, big shout out to everybody in Candlelit Tales, all of you who are helping us and all of our Patreon supporters. You guys are great. Thank you so much. Uh, if you'd like to support this podcast, the most straightforward way is to go to patreon.com forward slash Candlelit Tales and become one of those supporters. If that's not within your means, that's totally sound. We we understand. You can share us on social media. You can give us a like. You can tell your friends about the podcast. All of these kind of intangible things really help out a lot actually and if you want to get in touch send us comments send us questions send us your favourite story uh, that can all go to info at candlelittales.ie and you can keep up with everything that we're doing uh, on our website candlelittales.ie follow us on social media we use hashtag candlelittalespodcast you can pretty much find us on everything if you look for candlelit tales if there's a social media that you're on that we're not on, just like, just drop us a link in the email there, lads, and we'll get on it. All right? You. <laughs>